Hi, this screencast is about getting up and running with an OpenShift service mesh. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to install a demonstration application and then bind it to its service mesh and then control the application's behavior through the service mesh. Uh, the demonstration application is a fairly simple one. It's composed of three microservices. One is orders, and the orders microservice talks to a Kubernetes uh, deployment named or orders. And in turn, orders will make payments. And then when a payment is made, part of the response will be to get a uh, recommendation along with the order return. Uh, the payment service uses a payments deployment. And the recommendation service uses two deployments. One is recommendations music, and the other is recommendations food. Now, when the service mesh is first applied, what will happen is that the orders service, which uses the orders deployment, will get recommendations from both the food and the music deployments in a round robin fashion. However, after the service mesh is running, we're going to apply a destination rule. And the destination rule, what that will do is we'll tell the recommendations uh, service to use only a specific deployment. First, we'll start out using only the recommendations food deployment, and then we're going to alter the destination rule usage to show the recommendations music data, data coming from recommendations music. So that's how it's going to happen. And you might have to refer back to these uh, slides as you go through the video, because there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. But pretty much this is what we're going to be doing. Uh, the steps, there's going to be 10 steps. It's a little bit of an involved uh, video. We're going to uh, install the OpenShift service mesh. Actually, that's going to be happen already. Uh, we're going to have a um, OpenShift service mesh start installed at the start. Then we're going to create an application namespace. Uh, and then we're going to bind the application namespace to the service mesh. Now, I'm going to go through the mechanics of that, but underneath it all, the namespace has already been created and it's already been applied to the service mesh, but I'm going to show you the details of how that works. Then we're going to install the Kubernetes resources, and that's going to be the um, service for the orders and the order deployment, and then the service for the payment and the payment deployment, and then the service for the recommendations along with the recommendations food and recommendations music deployments. Then we're going to add a gateway to the OpenShift service mesh. And what a gateway does is it allows external requests to get into the service mesh. Then number six, we're going to add a virtual service orders uh, to the service mesh. And this is going to make it so that uh, the orders is subject to the service mesh. That means that the service mesh will be in, in charge of the order service. And then we're going to apply a destination rule to the service mesh. Then in number eight, we're going to create a new virtual service called virtual service food, which will be uh, bound to the recommendation service, and that will return only back the uh, recommendations from the deployment recommendations food. We're going to delete the virtual service food, and then we're going to add the virtual service music so that only recommendation data coming back from the deployment recommendations music will be applied to the payment response. And I'm going to use Postman to show you all this stuff in action. Okay, so that being said, the thing you need to understand, as I mentioned earlier, is that I, I did indeed install all the operators for the service mesh to the OpenShift cluster. And the way you do that is you go in to uh, the OpenShift con um, web console and select the administrator uh, tab, as you can see on the upper left. And then you're going to go down and you're going to select uh, uh, operator hub and then from operator hub you're going to select the operators that are shown in this diagram under installed operators and that's OpenShift uh, the OpenShift Elasticsearch operator the uh, Red Hat OpenShift distributed tracing platform the Kali operator the Red Hat OpenShift service mesh which is indeed the service mesh and also if you want to use the web terminal which we're going to use you're going to want to install the web terminal um, 
operator, which will allow you to use a web terminal in the OpenShift uh, web console. So that's pretty much uh, what we're doing. Uh, the source code uh, for this application is online, along with all the configuration files. And let me show you where that is. Okay, so that's here. So if you go to uh, Red Hat Developers Demo, you'll see a repository called Simple Service Mesh Demo. And in there, you're going to see the Kubernetes configuration files. Uh, you're going to see the service mesh configuration files. And also, you'll see the source code for the application itself. The application is installed as containers out on KIO. Now, I'm assuming that you sort of do understand a bit about Kubernetes, that you understand what a service is and what a deployment is and what a pod is and how a service finds its pod by using selector labels. Um, you, you, you need to know that. And if not, you might want to go back and review. And then I'm not assuming a lot of knowledge about a service mesh other than understanding a service mesh is really a one ring to rule them all approach to controlling applications in a Kubernetes, excuse me, in an OpenShift cluster. So given that, let's uh, let's start. So this is indeed um, my uh, OpenShift uh, cluster. And in this case, I'm running one under Azure. You need to have a, a fully functional uh uh, OpenShift cluster. That means that you have the ability to create namespaces and install operators. And in this case, you can see I have both uh, operator and developer. The other thing I'm going to do is you can see here, I'm going to add a uh, terminal window to run directly within the cluster. And this is going to automatically uh, bind the OC command line utility to the cluster. So that being said, let's move on. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create the namespace and I'm going to use the OC command line tool to do that. And so I'll go to here and you can see I'm going to use OC create namespace uh, demo. And I'm going to do that. And it's going to get saying I can't create it because the namespace already exists. That that's to be expected. That's not a server. When you run it from scratch on your installation, you'll say, oh, no problem. But in this case, I do have the um, namespace not only installed, but I also have it bound to the Kubernetes cluster. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go into administrator view and I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to go to operators and I'm going to go to installed operators. And let me go down to OpenShift here. And you can see here under OpenShift, there's there's a lot of, a lot of stuff, okay. And you can see that I have uh, provided APIs in this case, uh, service mesh control plane, service mesh me uh, member, and also Istio service mesh um, member role. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to go into the member role here, okay. And oh, excuse me, do I have to create a member role? Okay, I'm going to create the member role. I guess I forgot to do that. So to do that, I'm going to create the member role. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this. And this is going to go out and create uh, use the member role out on the repository. And what the member role is, is once you define you you bind the namespace to the member role, that means that the service mesh can see the application. And we're going to install our application under a namespace called service mesh demo. So let's run this and see what happens. Okay, and it's uh, thinking. Uh, okay, so let's go back here. And let's see if we can go find the... Uh, service mesh role let's go to yaml and if we go in oh better okay sorry it didn't do it happen so i'm going to just do it right here i'm going to say okay my membership here the namespace oh i'm sorry duh no here's the problem i'm sorry i do this all the time so let me respond you have to go into the istio system this is i do this all the time sorry and because the namespace the service mesh is going to be running under Istio system. Sorry about that confusion. And if we go into here, you'll see that indeed there's service mesh role, member role. So if we go to here, and again, this is very important. And again, I apologize for creating the confusion, but all of the service mesh is going to take place under Istio system. And when you run, install the operators, it's going to be installed under Istio system, that namespace. So if I go to service mesh member role, I go to default, and I look at the YAML, 
what you'll see here is if I go down here, you can see that the member service mesh demo has already been installed. I did that previously. Again, when you run the YAML file, uh, you'll this will happen for you in your instance. But this means now that the service mesh is going to know everything about what's going on in that namespace, and that namespace is service mesh demo. So now I have the potential for configure for binding the application to the service mesh, but I have to create the application and bind it. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the um, I'm going to get the source code um, from I'm going to um, install uh, I'm going to clone the um, dem demonstration application from uh, Red Hat and it's under uh, demo simple service mesh demo. OK, and now I have the uh, source code. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the working directory for the source code. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run an, a shell script I wrote called app setup. And let's go back here and let me go into the source code and show you what I mean by that. I'm going to go KS and app setup. What it does is it's going to create all of the Kubernetes resources that we need in order to uh, get the application up and running. And you'll see here that it's going to try to replace the service role. It's going to try to create the namespace. This will error out because the uh, namespaces already exist. And then it's going to create the uh, recommendations uh, service and deployment, the payment service and deployment, the orders service and deployment. And then it's also going to return the uh, route uh, to the uh, to the um, service mesh demo. But we're not going to use this route. This route will be ineffective because the service mesh will already have, hold, have taken hold. I'll explain what that means. But let's go back to here and let me run uh, the setup. Here, I'm going to go paste. Oh, sorry. Let's go to here. Let's see what happened here. Let me go to simple service mesh. There you go. Okay. Okay, let me clear the screen so that we have a little more real estate to work with. And then we go to LS. Let's see if it's there. Do a little typing. Uh, yeah, uh, excuse me. Then I got to see it. Huh, shows you what I know. Got to go to K8S. Okay, let's go to LS. Okay, and there it is app setup. So we'll go sh dot. Okay, and you can see now it's going to run the setup script. Okay. Okay, so now uh, let's see. Everybody should be in place here. OK, so we're saying everybody here is created. Everybody here is created. And so let's go into uh, developer mode here, developer view. And you can see here, uh, here is this is in the Istio space. But let's take a look at service mesh demo. And you can see here's everybody. There's here's orders. Uh, here's payments. And then here are here is the recommendations food and recommendations music uh, deployments. Uh, and then also what we'll do is we'll go back to um, administrator and just to make sure everybody's happy. We'll go to administrator and we'll go to uh, operators, installed operators, and we'll go to Istio service and we'll go down to here. We'll go to service role and we'll take a look at we'll go into the default. And we'll take a look at the YAML. Uh, and you can see that there's the service mesh member. So everybody is set up just hunky dory. Now, one last thing we're going to do. What we're going to do is we're going to do OC uh, get pods. And I'm going to get the pods by the namespace service mesh. Oops, I need to learn to type over the weekend demo. And what you can see here is the pods, the deployments were initially configured to run only a single pod in each deployment. However, if you see that there's uh, two containers in each pod, 
Okay, and what that second container is, that second container is a sidecar container that the service mesh injected into the pod. Uh, and it's actually an Envoy uh, container. And what that can, uh, sidecar container does is that's the means by which the service mesh talks to the deployment. So instead of Kubernetes talking directly to, excuse me, orders or payments or recommendations, what happens is, um, Kubernetes talks to the service mesh, the service mesh talks to the sidecar container, and the sidecar container talks to the deployment. That's how control is exerted. So right now we have the uh, containers uh, uh, deployment up and running. And the, um, the uh, sidecars have been injected. The next thing we need to do is install the gateway. And the gateway is the a uh, mechanism by which requests make their way into the service mesh. And if we go into here, you'll see here, there's a gateway. And this is the gateway YAML we're going to execute, but pretty much it's a gateway. We're gonna put it, take, take a look at sir, anything in service mesh demo, use the default gateway that gets shipped with uh, the service mesh, and anything coming in over port 80, send that into the service mesh. That's what that's about. So let's go to here. Let me give yourself a little more window. And then let's go grab the YAML. We'll do that. And let's put that uh, here. And there's the YAML, and we'll see here. And now we've created the gateway. However, the gateway, that lets you into the service mesh, but there's really nothing there once the requests arrive. And in order to put a there there, we need to create a virtual service. And in this case, we're gonna create a virtual service called order. So let me go back into the, so the, the configuration code here, and we'll go to uh, And this gets, uh, this is the orders, this is the YAML file. And what this is saying, it's saying, okay, here's the deal. Anything that comes in on the root of the request, any root request, what to do is port, uh, direct them, route them, send them to the orders host. Now, in service mesh parlance, a host translates into a Kubernetes service. So in this case, what's going to happen when a request comes in at the root, what the gateway, what the, excuse me, the virtual service is going to do is it's going to send it to the Kubernetes order service going up against port 8080. That's what's going to happen. So let's go uh, back to here. Let me grab the uh, command, the OC command. And let me clear the screen so we have a little more real estate. Okay, this is the OC command that's going to execute. And now you can see the virtual service has been created. What this means is that now the request can come in, the virtual service is looking, oh, there's a root request, I'm going to accept that and push it onto the orders host, which in KAS is the order service. And if you remember, the order service, what it's going to do is any request coming in, it's going to submit to the payment service and also to the recommendation service. And upon the return, the recommendation is going to give a recommendation text. So let's see if that works. Hopefully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Postman here and this is my postman instance and I have a little post going on here okay and what I have here is let me go to body and you can see here I have a simple post um, and it's going to go to Barney Kelly it's simple post this this is how the post is supposed to go in and it's just going to send an order in with order information credit card product ABCDFG so let me go send it and now you see I got a 200, a 200 return. This is successful. And what it's saying is it's giving the product and the credit card number. And then if you look, you can see a recommendation came back. And that recommendation says buy more nuts. And I just happen to know that comes from the recommendation food service. So that's, um, that's the response. And then if we go to get, the uh, get value, and I send it, you'll see here, by the way, this is all of the orders that have been placed in the service. And you can see there's buy some more recommendation, excellent nuts. So effectively, what we've done is we've put this layer of um, inspection on the service mesh through the virtual service called orders. And the request comes in, 
virtual service order says, oh, request coming in at the root. I can see this. I'm going to pass it on to the Kubernetes order service and let um, Kubernetes have its way with it. So that's one thing. All right, that's done. Now, uh, what I didn't show you how to do, and I'm going to do that now, is I'm going to show you how to get the actual URL to call uh, of the service meshes URL. So you can call, make a request to make a call. Sorry, I got a little fumbled on words. And the way you do that is you use the OC command, Istio system get route. And this is very particular to my installation of OpenShift on my platform, which in this case is Azure. I put that in. And then you can see this is this is indeed not this thing here, but here is uh, this is the route I, I've been using. And so if I go back to Postman, you can see there's the route there. That's just a nice. You need to have that. You need to know that the service mesh will publish its own route, and the way you're going to get it is to use uh, this command here. Okay. All right. That's done now. The next thing we're going to do is apply a destination rule. And what a destination rule does is it sets up some routing rules, for lack of a better term. So let's go back into the source code and look at the destination rules. We'll go to service mesh, and we'll go to destination rule. And we'll see destination rule here uh, says, OK, I have a virtual type kind destination rule. And I'm going to apply this to service mesh demo. And then what it's going to say is, here's the spec. any uh, this rule applies to any host recommendations. Any host recommendations translates into the Kubernetes recommendation service. And then I'm going to name the rule by a resource, or not, it's called an attribute called subsets. And in this case, the, the destination rule has two subsets. One is named recommendation food and recommendation music. And these names, they're arbitrary. They're just fundamentally arbitrary. I just named them the same as the uh, deployment, sort of, so that they, they made sense. And what this is saying here, saying, OK, uh, whenever you see a, a request that gets eventually ported to the underlying recommendation service, apply the label version food, in this case, with recommendation food, or if we're using the rule recommendation music, apply the ver the label version music. That's what the rule does. However, in order to enforce the rule, we're going to have to make a virtual service that uses the rule. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. But right now, what I'm going to show you is how to apply the rule. So let's go back. Oh, sorry, what happened here? That's strange. OK, let's open up. Uh, uh, let's see what happened to the terminal. Oh, it's down here. Oh, there's the terminal. Sorry, I got a little lost. All right, so let's apply the destination rule. So go to here. Uh, oh, sorry, typo. Okay, forgot to put the L. Ready, here we go. There's the L. OK, that the L then, sorry about that. OK, let's put that in. OK, so now we've created the uh, destination rule. And the destination rule is out there, but it doesn't do anything yet. And in order to make the destination rule work, what we need to do is to create a virtual service that uses it. So let's go back into the source code. Let's go back to service mesh. So let's take a look at virtual service food. And we're going to create that. And what virtual service food says, OK, go into the namespace service mesh demo and then find the host recommendations which translates into the kubernetes service named recommendations and we're going to apply a root based on a destination rule and the destination rule says okay go find uh, the service recommendations the host recommendations and go use the destination rule recommendations food now there's a lot of conventional logic in play here uh, sorry, I apologize on behalf of the service mesh, but remember the service mesh food, recommendations food, was defined in the destination rule here under the subset. And this is really a subset name, recommendation food. So if we go back here, 
we go back into it and I look at the virtual service it's going to create a virtual service bound to recommendations and it's going to go out onto the service mesh and look for a destination rule that has a subset name recommendation food that's what this is going to do so let's do this let me go now let me apply let's create this uh, let's create the um, virtual service so I'm going to create the virtual service. I'm going to leave the L on at the end so we don't get any errors. Okay, and the virtual service has been created. Okay, so what this means now is that any request to uh, orders and then delegates down to recommendations is only going to use food. So let's test that. Now, as you might recall, I said that until a destination rule is applied, what will happen is that the order service will feed up recommendations on a round robin basis alternating between food and music and the first time we did it it was food all right so typically we should expect if indeed the destination rule wasn't applied we should expect filtering between food and music so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this i'm going to call it uh, bobby oh, excuse me i gotta go to the post let's look at the post bob here and I'm going to change data a little so we have something to easier to keep track of. And I'll change it to Bobby Kelly. Okay, and I'll just do a little uh, cut and paste magic here. Okay, and if food, I'm going to we'll let uh, we'll let Bobby uh, use Jerry's credit card. What, right? Why not? Life short. All right, so we're going to and I'm going to send this ten times just because I can. I'm going to go one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm going to go back to the get and I'm going to get all all of them. And now as you can see, I have a whole boatload of uh, a whole boatload of um, orders that have been processed. And you can see all of them are by returning recommendations from the foods, in this case buy some more excellent nuts. Okay, this is the food recommendation, food only. Okay, that's good. So effectively what I've done is I've applied a destination, I've created a destination rule that has both recommendations food and recommendations music filters for those. And then also uh, I implemented it by creating a virtual service name uh, for the uh, recommendations service. I know that's a little bit confusing, but I created the virtual service recommendation, which sort of takes over the recommendation service under Kubernetes. Now, the other thing I do need to point out, and this is somewhat, this is important because you need to remember about how selectors work under a deployment. So if I go back to uh, my uh, developer mode and I look at our, um, I go into service mesh demo, and I take a look at um, the uh, recommendation recommendations food. Um, excuse me. I want to go look at the deployment. Uh, my fault. Let's take a look here. Go to topology. Uh, let's go to here. Uh, let's uh, take a look at the deployment. And if you look at the deployment, uh, the deployment is. Um, uses and in this case there are there are two labels application recommendation okay and version food and this is for the deployment for uh, app, uh recommendations food okay and then if we go back and take a look at the uh, deployment for recommendations music you'll see that the selector ships with uh, two labels applications recommendation and version music so food has uh, music excuse me music has app, app recommendations version music as their labels food has app recommendations version food as their labels so what what is the relevance here so if we were to go back here and we'll go back to the uh, command line because it's a little easier excuse me Let's go to the command line here. It's a little easier. And if I go to um, get, excuse me, OC, get services, and it's in the namespace uh, 
Sorry. Okay, and if we were to take a look at the uh, recommendation service, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go OC describe Okay, if we were to look at the selector for the recommendation service, you can see it only has one selector label defined, and that's app recommendations. So the Kubernetes recommendation service is going out into the cluster and say, give me pods that have the label app equals recommendations. However, the destination rule is applying another label. And in the case of recommendations food, it's applying the label version food. And in the case of recommendation music, it's applying the label version music. So what's happening is the service mesh is injecting labels into the service definition of the virtual service. I know that's a lot to go on, and if you're not really familiar with Kubernetes selectors, it's a little hard to grasp, but the important thing to understand is that you create the rule in the destination rule, and you apply a destination rule in a virtual service. And in this case, we have a virtual service that's filtering on recommendations food. What we're going to do now is we're gonna take away the recommendations food virtual service, and we're going to apply the one for music. So the first thing I need to do is I need to delete the virtual service for food. Let me clear this. Okay, that's gone. There is no more virtual service for food. All that filtering has been taken off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the virtual service for music. And before I do that, let's just go back here. Let me review and go virtual service music. And it's saying, hey, go look for pods that have not only app recommendations, and that's there implicitly, but also for the injected labels that are defined in the subset. And if you might remember, the injected label is version music. I know, a lot going on. You might want to go back and review this video a couple of times just to keep track of things. So let's go back here and I'm going to now apply the virtual service. Notice the spelling is correct now. Hit enter. Okay, good. So now that music virtual service has been applied. So let's go back to Postman. Okay, and let's go to uh, my, uh, my post. In this case, I'm post and we'll make another one and we'll call it uh, Betty Kelly just because we can. Okay, and we'll go here, Betty. Uh, do a little cut and paste uh, magic here. Go Betty. Okay, and we'll make Betty, Betty. And in this case, we're gonna say, oh, this product is a music, okay. Again, this is arbitrary. There's nothing, uh, that this is nothing that you have to do. And we're gonna make, uh, We'll call this guitar strings. Whoops. Just because we can. Okay. So maybe I should learn how to type over the weekend. All right. So Betty's buying some guitar strings. And remember now the filter for recommendations music is in play. So I'm going to send one. Good. 200. And let me, uh, let's see what happened here. Okay. Oh, buy it. that's a music rep, uh, recommendation. Buy another album by The Temptations. And let me send 10. Remember, the contract was no more wrong robining. Everything is going to be filtered according to music. So we'll go to here. We'll go to get. I'm going to send, get all of that. There's the old recommendations for, fo for food. But if we go down now, we'll see, oh, by the way, all of these orders are now filtered to use recommendations music. There you go. I just bought 10 guitar strings, guitar strings over and over again. So there you have it. That's, you know, really pretty, pretty much as, as it goes. So let me just bring up the, um, this 
diagram again so we're very clear about what happened. So what happened was I created a gateway. Okay, and the gateways are reflected as this gateway URL. And I told the gateway to take any incoming requests to port 80 and forward it on to the virtual service orders. And underneath the covers, virtual service orders uses the Kubernetes orders service, which in turn uses the Kubernetes orders deployment. Then what I did after I exercised general orders in a round robin fashion, getting back uh, music and food and music and food and music and food, I have created a destination rule. And in the destination rule, I created two subsets. One is called version food and the other one's called version music. Not called, the name is, the name is actually recommendations food and recommendations music, but I define the labels version food and version music. Then what I did is I applied the virtual service named virtual service food. Virtual service food is going to go out and look for the recommendation service. And then it's going to inject the labels defined in the subset recommendations food. And in this case, the label is version food. And as you might recall, only the deployment recommendations food supports that label in addition to the originating label of app colon recommendations. Then what I did is I deleted the virtual service for virtual service food, reapplied a virtual service for virtual service music, and then I executed Postman to get, to send uh, orders for some sort of musical item. And I got back uh, recommendations for music as defined in the virtual service music, uh, virtual service. I know I repeated myself. All right, so there you have it. Uh, this is a lot, a lot going on. It is confusing. I know it took me a while to say, oh, now I sort of get it. Um, so what I recommend doing, if you have a chance, just go back and review this video informally. Take some time and spend some time in the um, manifest files and in the source code so you can get a sense of, of what's going on. Thanks for taking the time to uh, view this video. I hope it helped you understand OpenShift Service Mesh a bit better than when it started. Thanks for watching.